Today I'm at the Mount Pleasant Airport because this is a place where uh, people take off. <laughs> and, and, you know, and this is the day also that my daughter is learning how to fly an airplane for the first time. And it's, I think it's quite appropriate that we talk about being a newlywed because newlyweds, that's the time in a season in life where it's a new season. It's about taking off, going on a new adventure with your new spouse. But there are challenges that come along the way. And one of the newest newlyweds of the group is Garrett and his research shows that most couples struggle with money, time, chores, conflict, and sexual preferences. And so today, we're gonna focus on chores and conflicts. Last week, we focused on money and time, and next week, it's how to manage sexual preferences, the differences there. So all five struggles have a unique solution and, and an approach that works in all cases. And that solution is through loving, gentle, grateful, joyful trust and commitment Together you communicate and agree upon a plan. And today, like I said, we're gonna focus on chores and communication conflict management, starting with chore management. Now, the scripture says you're the men out there, that you're the head of the household. And sometimes that is said in a very arrogant way. And, and I wanna point out to you that to be the head of a household to be a great leader, Jesus says in Matthew 20, verses 26 to 28 ESV, whoever wants to be great, who wants to be this great leader or head of their household, you got to be a servant. Whoever wants to be the first must be a slave. Even as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and give his life up as a ransom for many. And that's what Christ did. And he did it with this attitude that, say, that you find in Luke 22, Verse 42 of the ESV says, not my will, but yours be done. And that's the attitude that Christ had. So to be the head of a household is an honor and it's a wonderful thing, but it also means that you're the servant of all. And if you're the head of the household, then what is your spouse? It's, to me, the Holy Spirit said, the head of the household is the man and the wife is the heart of the household. And in all cases, they're both under the leadership and direction and guiding of God and the Holy Spirit. So those stacking up of dishes in the sink where it becomes impossible to wash, who's responsible for that? Well, we, not to say that this is right, but in our household, it was if you cooked it, if you went through all the hassle and work of cooking the meal for the family, then the cook got to take it easy and clean and pick up afterwards. So who picks up, who cleans up? Well, it's gonna be different in everyone's situation. You know, who cares the most about it? Who does the best at the cleaning? Who does the best at picking up? Who has the most of the time? And the key is to agree upon those roles. And if you don't like the way your spouse does it, then you do it. And if you sign it, to someone to do, then give that person the freedom to do it their way. You don't have to always do it your way. They don't have to. Donald, Donald's beautiful wife, Sherry, is now with the Lord in heaven. And Donald lamented with the group that their arguments many times were over the small stuff and that so much time was wasted, time that he wishes that he could get back. And so he says, don't sweat the small stuff. And the reality is, most stuff is the small stuff. You are too blessed to be stressed, too blessed to be carrying these, these pains that you carry. They're not necessary to carry. So newlyweds, you know, your goal is to spend the rest of your life together. And, and one of the things that Donald pointed out was that um, just recently, uh, right after a wedding here in Charleston, um, they were riding back in the golf cart and the um, the bride looked to the groom and, and um, said, I'm looking forward to spending the rest of my life together. And this is according to the driver of the, of the golf cart. And she, as soon as she said that, another car ran in the back of their 
golf cart and she went to be with the Lord that day. So we don't know when our time is up. And she definitely was able to honor her commitment. She spent the rest of her life with him. So the point being is this, is that honor your spouse. You don't know how much time you have left together. And Donald stressed the importance of if it's important to your spouse, regardless how silly you think it is, it's, in, it's important to you. So if she says the toilet paper roll is to go a certain direction and you don't really care, then, then it goes that direction. And Dwight pointed out, it's over the top, right? It, the toilet paper is supposed to go over the top. And I said, yeah, you're right. She says, that's, that's because they're over the top people. You know, that's just who they are. Yeah, so, you know, picking up beer clippings in the sink, you know, this is just part of life. It, you know, you want to clean up after yourself and just know that God has put inside you different giftings and different strengths and not to look down upon the other person if they don't have the same strength. And so the, our recommendations are to, based on the scriptures, that there should be no condescending tone of voice when you're speaking to your spouse about those things. Let no corrupt talk come out of your mouth, but only what is good for building up that fits the occasion so that you may give grace and favor to those who hear. That's Ephesians 4, 29 ESV. Do all things without grumbling or disputing. That's Philippians 4, excuse me, Philippians 2, 14 ESV. And, and once again, through always through love, gentle gratitude, joyful trust and commitment, together communicate and agree upon a plan. So managing communication and conflict. What, the, what I just actually just spoke to you about doing chores is actually applies also to managing uh, conflict. Donald said that he would use, he calls it the 3F communication strategy. I understand how you feel. Feel is the first one. I felt the same way. Felt is the second F. And then finally, I found that and that's the, the final F in there. Um, so it's feel, felt, found. And he also said that he would try to match the conversation levels. So when his spouse would say, I feel, then he would know that the conversation is coming from an emotional place. So he needed to communicate and connect emotionally, not rationally or with logic in that moment. And when the spouse would say, I think, then the conversation comes from a place of rationality and reason and not motion. So you want to communicate from a ra rational point of view. So how best to communicate when one of us gets overwhelmed and needs time to get away to recharge? Well, first of all, Jesus did that. Jesus would, would, would step aside from the crowds, go to a quiet place in the wilderness to go pray, to get recharged, to get back, you know, um, and, and well, he was always he was always in communication with his father, but to just to honor that time as a special time. So there are times in your life where you're going to feel overwhelmed. And so it's OK. Even Jesus did that. So go away to get the emotions out so that the logic and the Holy Spirit can come back in and so that you two could come back together. Because if you tried to push through a time where someone's emotionally overwhelmed, it's not going to go well. You can't, logic can't come in. Holy Spirit is, is having a hard time to manage in that when it's a turbulent situation because the Holy Spirit is a gentle spirit. It's not going to force its way upon you. So, you know, especially if the spouse is bringing up an issue that the spouse has had brewing up inside for quite a while, then, and then that spouse brings it up to, to the other person, well, that other person may have never ever even knew this was going on. So this is the first time hearing it. So you might have months of, of thinking it through, and this is the first time your spouse is hearing of this challenge. So you got to give, if you want a quality response, then you got to give time for the other person to process it. So, you know, here's the challenge, and then they go away and they pray about it. So they get the emotions out so that you're not, if they're an audible processor like me, it's so important that I go process it by myself because what comes out of my mind is not going to be good until I've, I've filtered it through the Holy Spirit. And, then, and so what I do when I go to the Holy Spirit, I feel, this is what I feel, I let it all out. And then God comes back in and speaks truth into me. This is what's real. This is what's real. So 
when do you compromise in arguments and when do you hold your ground? Well, Donald, I love what he said. Well, it depends on what ground you're holding on to. Is it God's ground or yours? Listening to the Holy Spirit re requires um, listening ears and, and knowing what ground that you're holding on to. Is it just a selfish thing or is it really what God has called you to hold your ground on? And only the Holy Spirit knows. So what do you do if you need advice? Where do you go to? Um, is it okay to go to your parents for marital advice? Um, well, first of all, most of the time, and, and most of us need, and the best situation for most of us is a third-party professional perspective, unbiased, unemotional, unattached to the couple, especially in the first year of marriage, to help give you some insights on how to manage it well and to do it you know, often throughout your marriage. You know, there's no shame in that. In fact, it's, it's, it's a biblical principle. Confess your sins to one another and you should be healed. And as far as asking your parents' opinion, um, I love how Dwight put it. He says, well, <laughs> uh, your parents can't give you any more than what they already have. So do they have a great marriage? If they don't, then definitely don't ask them for marriage advice. Um, you know, so before you ever ask them, make sure that this is a relationship that you would want to model. But in all cases, most of us said, yeah, probably best not to bring your parents involved just because that it is so common that, uh, well, first of all, they're going to take your side over your spouse's side um, most of the time because of the relationship they have with you. And um, there are many times that that you and your spouse may resolve the issue, but you fail to communicate the, re the resolution with your family and, and your family is still holding resentment long after you've let it go. So it, it's, for the most part, it's not advisable that you go to your parents once you're married for that type of advice. Before you're married, you know, hey, that's a whole different ball game. Um, but, you know, especially if there's a breakup and, and you need your parents, your parents to be on your side to help you, uh, keep you from going back to that relationship when you know that it's unhealthy for you. So here's some scriptures that I have for you on communication and that I want to you to hear these are four different uh, uh, books of the Bible um, four different verses that put them together take captive every thought and destroy the thoughts that are not from God for your weapons of warfare are not physical but they are words that have divine power to destroy strongholds and if you speak you should do it as though you're speaking the very words of God and if you serve you should do it with the strength that God provides. Let no corrupt talk come out of your mouth, but only what is good for building up others and, and that it fits the occasion and that it may give grace and favor and benefit those who hear. And those who consider themselves religious, yet don't keep a tight rein on their tongues, well, you deceive yourself and your religion is worthless. Now, I got those scripture verses in the description or in the notes, if you want to look those up. In 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 1 through 8, Wives, and this is, and likewise, husbands, be subject to each other. Respect pure conduct, adoring, imperishable beauty of gentle, quiet spirit. Quiet spirit means you're not yelling at each other, which God says is precious in His sight. And adorned by submitting and calling your husband Lord. Wow, <laughs> That's good. I like that verse. <laughs> do good and do not fear anything that is frightening. And likewise, meaning the men got to do the same thing. She is your queen. But men get additional requirements on there. It says, husbands, live with your wives in an understanding way. And if you look up what that word means in its original language, it means an experimental knowledge that's gleaned from firsthand personal experience. And it goes on and says, show honor to the woman who is a weaker vessel, meaning that use extra gentleness with her. It's what it means to be a gentle man. Notice you don't hear gentle woman, it's gentle man. And that's how you are to treat her. And why do you want to treat her that way? So that your prayers may not be hindered. How you love God's daughter 
and this is um, this is my interpretation how you handle loving God's daughter that's your wife will impact your relationship with God and how you treat your wife reflects the relationship you have with God because your wife is someone you can hear and see you know if you are disrespecting what she's asking of you to do how can God expect you to listen to what he's saying to you and, and respond in a proper way. So how you love and treat your wife invites God to treat you the same way. And then scripture goes on to say, have unity of mind, sympathy, brotherly love, tender heart, and a humble mind. And we've got some videos. Uh, we've got lots of videos. Uh, you can look down below and, and look in description on conflict management. And it's through loving, gentle, Grateful, joyful, trust, and commitment. Together you communicate and agree upon a plan to get you to where you guys need to be and to be able to communicate in a level that is honoring and that it doesn't avoid conflicts. In fact, it invites conflicts in so that you can resolve them and have a tighter and more solid union together. Love you. Lord bless you. Hope you can benefit greatly from these words of wisdom and advice from our group. And remember, you can look at the uh, group discussions if you want more information. This is just a quick summary of it all.